In this lecture, we will discuss the blood bank automation for transfusion services. Automation in blood bank does present itself with some benefits as well as challenges. Now the benefits are the potential opportunities that are there. It can reduce um, operating costs. It can um, redesign the work processes to um, and provide additional support systems. It can increase productivity as well as enhance the total quality. So automation can kind of provide that uniformity within a lab. Um, you know, it helps to reduce the operating costs because you are having these processes be automated so that you don't have a tech that's devoting time um, to, to doing these processes. So the machine is doing it where the tech can focus their attention on other things. Some of the challenges are just the concerns among the staff um, as far as job placement and involvement in the decision making. Um, you know, a lot of people just don't adjust well to change. And one of the areas in the laboratory that has remained um, so much with so much manual testing would be blood bank and uh, micro. So when you start bringing in automation to these areas, more particularly blood bank, because people are aware that this is the one area where if you make mistakes, um, you know, it really can harm someone. So um, as far as the the concerns that staff may have, some of your older generations may be more apprehensive to use the automated system simply because they know the severity of what you're actually doing and testing in that that department. So um, th they still have that confidence in themselves over the automation. There are cost justification issues. So um, automation overall is very expensive. So being able to justify that you need that autom automation in blood bank um, is sometimes hard to prove. And of course you have the implementation issues that can come about when you bring in a new instrument. Um, it's very, um, very, um, it takes a lot of time to actually go through the process of setting up the machine, doing the validations, implementing it, training. Um, all of those require a lot of extra time and staff. And usually if you're gonna bring in automation to the blood bank world or a new analyzer, you have to send someone to do the specialized training on it. So you're also pulling someone away from the, the bench to actually go do this training. And then that person is usually responsible for training the other. So again, you're taking away the time that that person should be working to do all these processes. So in making the decision to implement some sort of automation in, in blood bank, you have to look at several things to include testing, sample handling, and a data handling. So with testing, it's usually gonna be some sort of random access mode. Um, this means that you can do multiple samples at a time. You can interrupt the system while it's already testing one patient to add another. Um, you have an extensive test menu with it. You wanna make sure that you're able to do a bulk of your testing and utilize that automation. You don't wanna get an instrument that you're only gonna run one test on, so it's not very cost effective. And of course, it's gonna have an automated reader on it. So it's gonna read and record and document those results for you. It's actually, most of them will actually take a picture of it. So you have a picture on file of those actual reactions. And of course, it's also gonna be more precise in its pipetting and things like that. So you're gonna have that consistency across the board where um, if you have techs that are doing tube testing, um, for some reason, some techs have more of a squirt rather than a drop. So the amount of reagent that they're testing um, is not uniform. You also wanna look at sample handling. Is it able to detect a clot? Is it able to detect the level of the fluid that is in there? Does it have a barcode reader? Most labs are resorting to actual barcodes now. Um, very rarely do you see handwritten labels anymore. Um, does it have closed tube sampling? In other words, does it pierce that top of that test tube and um, so that there's less exposure? Uh, does it have precise sampling? Does it accept multiple samples at one time? Um, you know, or is it just gonna run one sample at a time? If it's just running one sample at a time, it not, may not be very cost effective for a lab that needs to process um, multiple samples. 
How does it handle the data? Are there flexible, is the software flexible, easy to use? Does it flag discrepancies? Does it interface with your laboratory information system? Um, you know, if it doesn't interface, that means that you're going to have to um, manually enter those results into the system, which leads to the possibility of more error. Does it um, automatically update the patient information within the laboratory uh, information system? So these are all kind of things that you're going to be looking at when you're trying to evaluate what particular analyzer is appropriate for your blood bank. Now, of course, you're also going to look at things like the vendor. Um, do you already have a contract with them? Do they provide extra support? Do they provide training? Is that extra? What kind of services do they provide? Do they provide maintenance services, um, troubleshooting services? So all of those are things that you would have to look at. Um, looking at the particular test uh, methodology or the technology that you're using, is it reliable? Is it accurate? Also looking at um, the particular instrument, is it adaptable for your particular laboratory? Is it available now? Um, is it cost effective? So it's a lot of different things that you're gonna have to look at when evaluating the particular analyzer. Now, traditional testing in blood bank has been the tube method. So you use a glass tube, you mix your patient sample and your reagents in the tubes, you do a spin process and then you read it. The automated systems now use a little bit of a different based technology. So you actually have your solid phase uh, red cell agglutination assays, you have the gel technology, and you also have the microplates. And so the microplates just kind of downsizes the um, tube test method. Instruments can do a variety of different tests on it to include your ABO and your RH testing, uh, doing antibody screens and antibody identifications, cross matches, um, as well as other things like your DAT testing, your um, uh, antigen testing. So there are um, a variety of things that can actually be done. Pretty much a bulk of um, the blood bank testing that is done now can be performed on the instrument. Now traditionally when we do our tube method it is based off of hemagglutination. So this is when you have those red cells, hema or heme, uh, those red cells or are, are, have those antigens on them and then you're testing them against the antibodies. And that's where your tube method is kind of gone over to the microplate method. So it just kind of has a more um, condensed version of that tube method. And of course, barcoded samples and reagents are used. Um, your reagents are usually barcoded as well. Uh, plates are automatically read using a camera that's in that machine, so it's actually reading and recording those reactions that are taking place. So in solid phase red cell um, adherence assays, I think earlier I said agglutination, uh, it's kind of agglutination, they're, they're agglutinating antigens and antibodies, um, but more specifically it, it does say adherence assays are used for both indirect Antiglobulin tests are indirects like our antibody screen, antibody panels, and then our direct antiglobulin test. So remember with our direct antiglobulin test, we are um, looking for any sort of in vivo um, coding of those patient red cells where um, our indirect is looking for the presence of um, the antibodies. Uh, present in that patient's sample. Now, the microtiter wells that are used with this particular assay um, actually have the red blood cell membranes bound to the surface of those wells. So you can see a side view here. Um, these little white beads would be the actual uh, red blood cells that are bound to the edge of those wells. And what we're looking for is um, any sort of agglutination with the patient's sample. Now, if you were to look at it from the side, um, that's kind of what you would see is you, this sample here is positive, so you have all of those agglutinations taking place. 
whereas this sample you have partial agglutinations or adherence taking place to the side of those wells. Whereas in a negative, it will just kind of bypass and just kind of pile up into the bottom there. So with a positive reaction, it's kind of adhered all around the inside of that well. So you just have this cloudiness throughout the well. So you can see some examples here. So this is a four plus or a very strong reaction here. Um, this right here, so testing with anti-A, you have this strong reaction where those cells agglutinated to the side of that well. And um, so you've got a four plus reaction here. Now, if there's just partial agglutination or adherence to the side of that well, then you will see some of them stick, but then you'll see others that just kind of flow in um, more towards the bottom of that well. So this would be like a three plus reaction where you have it um, not agglutinating to the whole entire well, but just most of it. And then you have a little bit of a weaker reaction. So you can see more of those cells are kind of clumping down and coming down to that center. Here in your one plus reaction, you can see where you've got a lot of cells in the bottom, but they kind of fade out. So you see like a little bit of a cloudiness around that edge versus a negative where you have that sharp outside edge where it just forms more that sharp ring um, for that button where those cells have kind of settled down. So here in our example, we have that four plus reaction. Of course, we have negative uh, four plus reaction and then negative and another four plus reaction. So if we were to look at this patient's type and we wanna know what their type is, then we would consider this patient an A positive patient. So the um, system that utilizes this is the capture or system. So to do this particular test, again, you have the antigen is coded on the cell wall you're gonna add your um, low ionic strength uh, saline solution as well as the plasma. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna allow those antibodies to bind um, to those antigens if those antibodies are targeting those particular antigens. Um, so they will either bind or they won't bind. If they're not directed against the antigens that are inside of this well, then they're just gonna remain floating around. And then what you do is you have a wash step. So you'll go through, wash away anything unbound. So you can see here where all of these unbound antibodies were washed away. So we have a clean slate. And then you're gonna add what we call indicator cells. So once those indicator cells are added, then they're gonna come in and kind of agglutinate to where those antibodies have already bound. So that's why you can see where you've gotten partial agglutinations versus the four plus reaction. And then of course you have that negative reaction here. There are two systems that do use a solid phase type of reaction. Um, you have the Tango, that's the Tango Infinity that BioRed makes, as well as the um, Capture that's made by Emucor. Um, both of these systems utilize multiple methods in order to um, give you the full, uh, full spectrum of testing throughout your blood bank department. Now this is a great brochure that um, for the capture analyzer that kind of helps explain this and it kind of gives you a little bit of a comparison between the actual tube test versus the capture test. So again, you kind of got to get your mind frame of the opposite. So with our tube and our microplates, we're looking for those strong agglutination button type reactions or any kind of a clumps or agglutination in order to indicate that we have a positive result. So here we have our one plus three, four plus reactions in two, whereas our capture is complete opposite. So we're looking for those reactions to here to the side of those wells versus agglutinating in a clump. So the BioRed uses this solid screen too. So this is a solid phase assay that detects red blood cell antibodies in serum or plasma. And this is because the whales have actually been pre-coated with protein A, which actually has a high affinity for the FC portion of those particular immunoglobulins. So if the 
if there's a positive test, that means that the red blood cells and antibody to the immunoglobulin G or anti-IgG has bound to that protein A and it forms a smooth layer. Now, if it's negative, then those red cells again will kind of seep down to the bottom of that whale. And then um, you'll just see that little clump of cells at the bottom. Now, my apologies, because I do not know how to pronounce this particular test, but it is a hemagglutination assay. So again, this is the addition to the BioRads test. So they use the, um, the previous method, the solid phase, to do like their anti antibody screens and things like that. And then they use the hemagglutination method for uh, the ABO, RH testing, um, uh, antigen testing, things like that. And so what they use is monoclonal antiserum that is dried inside of those wells. And then you add your patient sample. And then it basically just goes through an incubation and then centrifugation process. And then you're looking for that hemagglutination. So agglutinating of those cells clumping together is considered positive. So even though you're kind of looking at it in those micro wells, um, it's not the same thing as the solid phase. So this is more of that micro well testing that's um, similar or same as your tube testing. The difference is, is the antiserum is coated in those wells for you. You don't put the reagent into the plastic wells and then do the testing. It's already in there. So there are automated systems for gel testing. So Ortho originally came up with the IDMTS gel test technology, and they developed this to be put on their automated instrument called the Ortho ProView. And so basically what it was, what I like to call was a glorified pipetter, because the beauty of this system was that you could still do the gel testing even if the analyzer was down. So a lot of people do the gel testing which is kind of more of a semi-automated system um, where you would just pipe up your reagents and things into the gel card and put them in the incubator and manually put them in the centrifuge. So with the ProView, it actually does everything for you. It does the pipetting, um, it incubates the cards for you, and then it spins the cards for you. But the good part is that it takes digital images and um, you have those digital images that the computer will interpret for you or you can look at them as well. Um, so that's that's a benefit to that ProView system. Now, Ortho has kind of upped their game with this and built a better or bigger analyzer to actually do this. So the gel technology is used on the Ortho ProView. They have, um, Ortho has made a bigger version of the analyzer with a few more capabilities. This is called the Vision. Um, but the ProView itself, it's, um, it's their original version and basically what what I always used to say about it was basically just a glorified pipetter because even if the machine was down then you could still do your gel testing uh, manually but the machine itself it allows you to place your gel cards in here your patient samples on this wheel your reagents go in here and then this arm right here will actually do your pipetting. It pipettes into the gel wells, and then it takes it and puts it in the centrifuge that's back here. It takes pictures of it. There's a waste back here as well. Um, so it basically just keeps everything kind of contained in the machine and does all of the pipetting for you. And once it's done, it will take a picture of those cards, and then it gives you this nice little printout that shows you your forward typing, the auto control for that patient. The reverse type in it interprets your blood type for you and of course it gives you your antibody screen results this particular um, printout here just has a two cell uh, you could do a three cell but um, basically what it's going to do is just kind of eliminating some of those time consuming processes and increased productivity because while the machine is doing all the work you're able to do other things And this concludes our lecture.